Verse number 12, I'm going to start reading. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and all ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go, down, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff to Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jurel. Jure, Jure, Jure. Ye shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of uh, Tehathites, and the children of Croites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And I just want to stop. Well, let me read the last of 20. Believe in your Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe as prophets, and ye shall prosper. We like to be... In our generation, we are a generation of people who like to achieve and accomplish and do things. Uh, you know, we heard about global warming. You know, whatever it is to, uh, to, to stop global warming. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying, uh, uh, you know, you hear of the immigration problem. And uh, we want a solution. We're striving to fix that. Uh, we, we know that there are definitely problems with, with drug abuse and we are working hard as a society to develop a drug task force that will uh, be able to combat the drug problem in our communities. And uh, uh, you know, some people will say this, we are doing all that we can do. But you know there's going to come a day when everything that we do is going to be done. Everything is going to be done. We've done all that we can do. It's done. It's accomplished. I most recently talked to a very, very lovely person who was doing a wonderful job taking care of a loved one. I have watched the years as, as provision upon provision and care and love and concern and compassion and giving of, of oneself, even to the breaking down physically of oneself, the giving, the giving, the giving. And then when, when, when it is uh, all over and, and, and done, uh, you know, the, the tears said, I wish I would have done more. I wish that there was something else I would have done. I, I, I was raised uh, in a kind of a farm and, uh, 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 you know, it wasn't always that we, uh, uh, you know, we didn't always say goodnight, I love you as we got older, maybe when we were younger. So I remember rehearsing in my mind, I wondered did my dad know I love him, did I tell him enough that I love him? You know, I wish I would have said it one more time, done it over again. And so I'm very uh, uh, intentional in my life now to tell my family how much I love them because I don't want to live with regret. Uh, a 17-year-old boy is a lot different than a man in his 40s. 
And you know, we live life differently because we say, I wish I would have, could have done more. How many of you have ever had a loved one and you said, you look back and you're reflective and said, I wish I would have made more time. I wish I would have done more. But the doing is done and it is over. And what is done is done. What is written is written. There's nothing more to add to the story. It is over. It teaches us to live life with intention. And so I, I hear it so many times. I hold the hand of a widow. I hold the hand of a child. Or I, I, I embrace them in their conversation. I'm an active listener as I pull in close and listen to their stories of remorse and regret on how they wish they would have done more. We think on an earthly level that that is a, a, a very heart-wrenching, it is very overwhelming, and we may pat them on the back, and we may console and say, you've done everything, but if there's something yet left in our mind, our feeble words will not be able to rectify the situation that has already taken place. Words that were spoken that are like taking a pillow to the top of the Empire State Building and opening it up and let the feathers fly on a windy day, knowing that we can never recapture all those feathers and so there is that remorse that we live with. And so I, if we do it on a personal and, and on a, this side of eternity level, how much more is it going to be in eternity that we wish we would have done more? We wish we would have looked at the mountain in front of us. We wish, wish we would have looked at the impossibilities, but that we would have trusted God and we would have done even more so in the face of adversity. Trust the God in the situation and believe Him to work. I love my mom shared with me recently that she uh, uh, looked at someone that she loves very dearly, eyeball to eyeball, and asked them if they talked to God, and asked them if they were right with God, and told them their need of salvation. I said, Mom, you're pretty bold there, aren't you? She said, Well, I love them, and I don't want to see them die lost. Driven by eternity. I don't, I don't rebuttal her for what she did. It just seemed for this little timid lady to be so very strong in her wording. And so I appreciated that. And so here we find that the Jehoshaphat is leading the children of Israel, the Edomites, and, and, and uh, uh, the Ammonites. They align themselves together, and they're coming against the people of God. And uh, as these Moabites and Ammonites and Edomites come together, and they, can form, they form this confederation, if they would have been one for Israel to conquer on their own, it would have been no problem. But confederating together, Israel was concerned. And so they call all the Israelites together, and they begin to talk to God. They begin to worship God. And God, we kept your word. And God, you brought us through. But now what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And God says, stand still and see the salvation of God. You won't need to do anything. Amen. Let me fight the battle for you. I want to tell you something. Sometimes we need to be so driven by eternity that we trust God to fight our battles for us. We don't need to say the word. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to tuck tail and run. Amen. But we are driven by the eternity and the promises of God that He will forever take care of us. And so on the morrow, the Bible says, the next day they got up. And what did they see? They began to fight one another, the Edomites, the, uh, the Ammonites, uh, uh, these Moabite people. And the Bible says that they killed each other till there was not one left standing. God fought the battle for them. Amen. I need to tell us when the doing is done, will we have trusted God for every situation of our life? Listen to me tonight. This may sound harsh, but sometimes this journey of grace that God writes through His blood and it's his story. Not everybody who starts with you will finish with you. 
Do you hear me? But what are we going to do? What are we going to do when others compromise? What are we going to do when others give up on God? What are we going to do when others become so distracted by the cares of this life? Amen. Jesus said, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. I want to ask you, where is your treasure buried? And what is your focus? Have you put on your glasses that everything in your life, amen, is driven by eternity? You look at it and see what is the eternal benefit or the eternal repercussions of my decisions, of my word, of my life, of what I'm doing. Amen. I need to tell you that I want my life to count for Jesus. Amen. I want to when I stand before God. I don't want to be remorseful and say, I wish I could. I would have, would have done more. Amen. I wish I would have said something else. I wish I would have prayed longer. I wish I would have known more of the Word of God. I wish I would have sought revival more. I wish I would have reached out to other people more. I don't want to live with regret. I want to make sure everything I do for God, amen, is done while the doing is good. How many of you would love to have one more chance to hold your hand of your loved one? To say I love you. There are some moments as I was getting ready for this message. I was thinking, you know, there are some moments. That moment when your bride walks down the aisle. I remember moments on the beach. We were walking on our honeymoon. And uh, just there in that beautiful uh, air. The, 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 just enough light to, to see. And the waves coming in. I wish it could have lasted forever. The other night, Brinley crawled up in bed with me. She wanted to snuggle with Daddy. I take all those snuggles every time. I will do anything I can do to, 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 to get those snuggles of those girls. And all of a sudden, I'm laying on the bed with her, waiting for her to go to sleep. And she turns around and faces me. She slips one hand under my neck, and she slips one hand over my neck, and she hugs me and falls asleep. And I think, I just wish this moment would last forever. But it doesn't. I'm telling you, only what we do in this life, there's coming a day when doing is done. Are we doing enough for eternity? Is our life driven by eternity? Excuse me while I get my phone out and I'm not going to text anybody. I'm simply going to read something that I didn't have time to write down that I snapped the picture of. In Sydney, Australia, if you ever get the chance to read a book, it's been several years since I read it, but I read uh, John Bevere's book, Driven by Eternity. He's actually trying to reboot that and bring it back out. He said all the books, and the guy's books, and amazing books. He said that book has most of all impacted his life. But... The word eternity was graffiti over an approximate 35 year period from 1932 to 1967, written numerous times in chalk and written in the streets of Sydney, Australia. The word had been written by a man, Arthur Stance. He was a, 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 a former Ill, Ill, illiterate soldier. He was a petty criminal, and he was an alcoholic who became a devout Christian in the late 1940s. For years after his conversion, up to his death in the 1960s, uh, Stace uh, revealed, uh, uh, this was revealed in a newspaper article in 1956, it was estimated that he wrote throughout the city, the city of Sydney, Australia, the word of eternity over one half a million times. Uh, 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 there is only two inscriptions left of where he wrote eternity. It was in the bell of, uh, of a building where he wrote eternity and also in a museum on a piece of paper with chalk he wrote the word eternity. 
It was during the year 2000 that during the Sydney, Sydney celebration of a new a century that they spent over a million dollars in fireworks. And look it up online. It's pretty neat. They Over a million dollars they spent in front of a bridge in fireworks to write out the word eternity. It had been written over a half a million times throughout Sydney, but during the turn of the century, they would write this word in fireworks to remind themselves of eternity. I don't know, I don't think we need fireworks. Amen. Maybe we need to sometimes just begin to write on a piece of paper every day the word eternity to be driven by it. But here was a man that his life was marred by sin. Amen. He was illiterate, but he learned how to write one thing, and that was eternity. You know why? Because it was written and inscribed within his heart. He was driven by eternity. I wonder tonight how many of us are driven by eternity. How many Josephs are here that when our friends turn their back on us or our family turns their back on us, people sell us out, people give up on us, people do us wrong when we feel like we're even in the prison, yet we hold to the hope of knowing that our life has purpose and our life counts and we've got to do what God's told us to do because eternity will tell the story of what we did during the hands of time. I wonder about people like Ruth who comes back and is misunderstood. She's mistreated, but she finds grace and she finds favor and she trusts God and she works even when the working is difficult. Amen. Here is this woman. She goes out and leans in the field of farmers who is told not to, uh, the, to harvest the side, leave them for the widows and for the poor. And here's Boaz and she does as she's instructed. And because of that, she gives birth birth, amen, to a son who will be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Her life was driven by eternity. Do you know why Daniel didn't bow his knees when the lions did? Because his life was driven by eternity. Amen. Is your life driven by eternity tonight? Everything about it. I know we have to work. I know we have responsibilities. But as Brother Clayton said this morning, some are so busy building their house down here that they don't put any effort into building their house up there. Driven by eternity. I don't know how else to say except my heart is strong tonight. And I feel child. That we must live our life driven by eternity. Listen, folks, let me tell you something. There are some that will come and sit in church pews and never understand it that point. Others may, but I cannot. I've got to launch out in the depths of God's Word. And my life has got to be driven by eternity. I'm not worried about if others make it. I'm going to reach out to them and what they need to do. Amen. Wherever they land in the kingdom. But I will land as close to the throne of God as I can. And I will land having done my very best for eternity. Only my life so soon will pass. And only what's done for Christ my life. We are almost a half a year through 2018. Where has it gone? I hope it's gone by being driven by eternity. Driven.
Ask God to help us to be driven by eternity.